Chapter 12, The Mirror of Erezed. Christmas was coming. One morning in mid-December, Hogwarts woke to find itself covered in several feet of snow. The lake froze solid and the Weasley twins were punished for bewitching several snowballs so that they followed Quirrell around, bouncing off the back of his turban. The few owls that managed to battle their way through the stormy sky to deliver post had to be nursed back to health by Hagrid before they could fly off again. No one could wait for the holidays to start. While the Gryffindor common room and the Great Hall had roaring fires, the drafty corridors had become icy and a bitter wind rattled the windows in the classrooms. Worst of all were Professor Snape's classes down in the dungeons, where their breath rose in a mist before them and they kept as close as possible to their hot cauldrons. I do feel so sorry for all those people who have to stay at Hogwarts for Christmas, said Draco Malfoy one potions class, because they're not wanted at home. He was looking over at Harry as he spoke. Spoke. Crab and Goyle chuckled. Harry, who was measuring out powdered spine of lionfish, ignored them. Malfoy had been even more unpleasant than usual since the Quidditch match. Disgusted that Slytherin had lost, he had tried to get everyone laughing at how a wide-mouthed tree frog would be replacing Harry as seeker next. Then he realised that nobody found this funny, because they were all so impressed at the way Harry had managed to stay on his bucking broomstick. So Malfoy, jealous and angry, had gone back to taunting Harry about having no proper family. It was true that Harry wasn't going back to Privet Drive for Christmas. Professor McGonagall had come around the week before making a list of students who would be staying for the holidays, and Harry had signed up at once. He didn't feel sorry for himself at all. This was probably going to be the best Christmas he'd ever had. Ron and his brothers were staying too, because Mr and Mrs Weasley were going to Romania to visit Charlie. When they left the dungeons at the end of potions, they found a large fir tree blocking the corridor ahead. Two enormous feet sticking out of the bottom and a loud puffing sound told them that Hagrid was behind it. Hi Hagrid, want any help? Ron asked, sticking his head through the branches. Nah, I'm alright thanks Ron. Would you mind moving out of the way? Came Malfoy's cold drool behind them. Are you trying to earn some extra money Weasley? Hoping to be gamekeeper yourself when you leave Hogwarts I suppose. That hut of Hagrid's must seem like a palace compared to what your family's used to. Ron dived at Malfoy just as Snape came up the stairs. Weasley. Ron let go of the front of Malfoy's robes. He was provoked, Professor Snape, said Hagrid, sticking his huge hairy face out from behind the tree. Malfoy was insulting his family. Be that as it may, fighting is against school rules, Hagrid, said Snape silkily. Five points from Gryffindor, and be grateful that it isn't more. Move along, all of you. Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle pushed roughly past the tree, scattering needles everywhere and smirking. I'll get him, said Ron, grinding his teeth at Malfoy's back. One of these days, I'll get him. I hate them both, said Harry. Malfoy and Snape. Come on, cheer up. It's nearly Christmas, said Hagrid. Tell you what, come with me and see the great hall. Luck's a treat. So Harry, Ron and Hermione followed Hagrid and his tree off to the Great Hall, where Professor McGonagall and Professor Flitwick were busy with the Christmas decorations. Ah, Hagrid, the last tree. Put it in the far corner, would you? The hall looked spectacular. Festoons of holly and mistletoe hung all around the walls, and no fewer than twelve towering Christmas trees stood around the room, some sparkling with tiny icicles, some glittering with hundreds of candles. How many days you got left till your holiday? Hagrid asked. Just one. And it reminds me. Harry, Ron, we've got half an hour before lunch. We should be in the library. Oh yeah, you're right, said Ron, tearing his eyes away from Professor Flitwick, who had golden baubles blossoming out of his wand and was trailing them over the branches of a new tree. The library? Said Hagrid, following them out of the hall. Oh, we're not working, Harry told him brightly. Ever since you mentioned Nicholas Flamel, we've been trying to find out who he is. You what? Hagrid looked shocked. Listen to you, I've told you. Drop it. It's nothing to do with you with that dog's garden. We just want to know who Nicholas Flamel is, that's all, said Hermione. Unless you'd like to tell us and save us the trouble, Harry added. We must have been through hundreds of books already and we can't find him anywhere. Just give us a hint. I know I've read his name somewhere. I'm saying nothing, 
said Hagrid flatly. Just have to find out for ourselves then, said Ron, and they left Hagrid looking disgruntled and hurried off to the library. They had indeed been searching books for Fermel's name ever since Hagrid let it slip, because how else were they going to find out what Snape was trying to steal? The trouble was, it was very hard to know where to begin, not knowing what Flamel might have done to get himself in a book. He wasn't in Great Wizards in the 20th Century or Notable Magical Names of Our Time. He was missing too from Important Modern Magical Discoveries and a study of recent developments in wizardry. And then of course there was the sheer size of the library. Tens of thousands of books, thousands of shelves, hundreds of narrow rows. Hermione took out a list of subjects and titles she had decided to search while Ron strode off down a row of books and started pulling them off the shelves at random. Harry wandered over to the restricted section. He'd been wondering for a while if Flamel wasn't somewhere in there. Unfortunately, you needed a specially signed note from one of the teachers to look in any of the restricted books, and he knew that he would never get one. These were the books containing powerful dark magic never taught at Hogwarts, and only read by older students studying defence against the dark arts. What are you looking for, boy? Nothing, said Harry. Madame Prince, the librarian, brandished a feather duster at him. You'd better get out then. Go on! Out! Madame Pince, the librarian, brandished a feather duster at him. Wishing he'd been a bit quicker at thinking up some story, Harry left the library. He, Ron and Hermione had already agreed they'd better not ask Madame Pince where they could find Flamel. They were sure that she'd be able to tell them, but they couldn't risk Snape hearing what they were up to. Harry waited outside the corridor to see if the other two had found anything, but he wasn't very hopeful. They'd been looking for a fortnight after all, but as they only had odd moments between lessons, it wasn't surprising they'd found nothing. What they really needed was a nice long search without Madame Pince breathing down their necks. Five minutes later, Ron and Hermione joined him, shaking their heads. They went off to lunch. You will keep looking while I'm away, won't you? Said Hermione. And send me an owl if you find anything. And you can ask your parents if they know who Flamel is. Said Ron. It should be safe to ask them. Very safe, as they're both dentists said Hermione. Once the holidays had started, Ron and Harry were having too good a time to even think much about Flamel. They had the dormitory to themselves and the common room was far emptier than usual so they were able to get the good armchairs by the fire. They sat by the hour eating anything they could spear on a toasting fork, bread, crumpets, marshmallows and plotting ways of getting Malfoy expelled which were fun to talk about even if they wouldn't work. Stay tuned for part two of the Mirror of Erised coming tomorrow. A huge thank you to Aidan, Lauren, James, Daisy and Isabel for taking part in this video.